Tom Hardy as Bane, Bill Goldberg from Pro Wrestling, Brock Lesnar. When you think of some of the most jacked and brutally Herculean physiques in the world, a well-developed set of traps are usually the centerpiece. Hey, I'm Sean Heisen, Editor-in-Chief of On It. Yes, my traps do need some work to be in the same league as the guys I just mentioned, but let me tell you what I've learned about building them in this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. When weightlifters say traps, they're talking about the trapezius muscles on the upper back. There are two of them, one on each side of the spine, and they consist of three parts, each with a different function. The upper traps start at the top of the neck and they attach along the upper edge of the shoulder blade and the outer edge of the shoulder. This part of the muscle shrugs your shoulders and helps you turn your head. The middle traps originate in the middle of the spine and spread out to the shoulder blade and the acromion joint. The mid traps pull your shoulder blades back and together. The lower traps start out way down at the bottom of the rib cage and stretch up to the upper edge of the shoulder blade. The lower traps do the opposite of what the upper traps do, drawing your shoulder blades downward. Most guys only train their traps with barbell and dumbbell shrugs, but as I just explained, that shrugging motion really only works the upper traps. To get trapezius muscles that appear three-dimensional and make you look like you're wearing an oxen's yoke, hence the term yoked, you need to train the traps other two functions. And that's not just a good idea for building a badass physique. Strengthening the middle and lower traps will also help to ward off shoulder injuries and keep your upper back in balance with your chest. Most people do shrugs by shrugging their shoulders straight up. That will certainly hit the upper traps, but you'll involve more of the muscle by angling your body forward a little bit, which allows you to get a greater range of motion and hit more of the middle traps, which is really the biggest, meatiest part of the muscle. This was a favorite technique of Dorian Yates, a Mr. Olympia winning bodybuilder with one of the biggest backs in history. Step one, hold dumbbells at your sides and bend your hips back about 20 degrees. Keep a long straight line from your head to your tailbone and brace your core. You don't want to round your lower back here. Retract your neck and tuck your chin. Maintain this body position throughout the exercise. Step two, shrug your shoulders up and slightly back. You should feel your whole upper back pinched together. Hold this top position for a second or two to really make the traps work, and then lower back down under control, letting the weight stretch your traps at the bottom of the rep. Note that as you get stronger, your grip strength will limit the weight you can use. It's okay to use lifting straps to reinforce your grip so you can shrug heavier weights and challenge your traps even more. Any rolling movement that has you squeezing your shoulder blades together will involve a lot of middle traps. But supporting your chest on a bench will provide more stability, which allows you to lift heavier weight and will better isolate the upper back muscles in general. There's a time and place for bent over rowing variations, but if you want to zero in on the traps, it's better to take your lower back out of the equation and not waste energy stabilizing the entire body. You can do these on a machine, with a barbell or with dumbbells, as I'm about to show. Step one. Set a bench to about a 45 degree angle. It just needs to be high enough to accommodate the length of your arms and prevent the weights you're using from hitting the floor at the bottom of each rep. Line the bench chest down and grasp dumbbells. Step two, row the weights with your arms out about 60 degrees. This will target the traps better than if your arms are close to your sides, which is more of a lat exercise. Drive your elbows back as far as you can and squeeze your shoulder blades together at the top. You may want to hold the top for a second or two as we did with the shrugs. Step three, lower the weights and allow your shoulders to spread at the bottom. As with the shrugs, it may be helpful to use lifting straps on your rows once you've worked up to very heavy weights that your grip can't hold on to. Here's a movement that really isolates the traps. The goal here is to prevent the other back muscles from assisting and force your traps to retract your shoulder blades alone. You can do these with a barbell or a machine, but dumbbells work fine too, as long as you use a wide enough grip to allow your shoulder blades to really retract all the way. Step one, set up on a bench the way we described for the chest supported row. Step two, simply retract your shoulders and squeeze them together. Hold the top for a second or two. Be careful not to shrug your shoulders up or hyperextend your back. Your chest may come off the pad a little, but don't arch your back hard trying to get the weight up. It's a short range of motion and a subtle movement but the point is to isolate the traps, so don't turn it into another row. Remember we said that your lower traps pull the shoulder blades down in a reverse shrugging motion. So any pull up or pull down variation will involve the lower traps to a large degree while it trains the lats. Still, it's a good idea to really isolate the lower traps to strengthen them, especially if you do a lot of overhead or chest pressing, which can be hard on the shoulder joints. 
Strong lower traps help to stabilize shoulders and the Y raise is a great movement for this purpose. Step one, set a bench to a 45 degree angle and lie on it chest down. Hold a light dumbbell in each hand and brace your core. Step two, raise your arms out in front of you on an angle so your body forms a Y shape. Hold the top for a second or two. You should feel the tension in the middle of your back and if you don't, make sure you're not going too heavy or arching your back. Because the traps are involved in so many of your other back exercises, you don't need to blast them with a death ray of volume to see gains. Here are two examples of back workouts that emphasize the trapezius. Try adding one or two trap focused exercises to your upper body or back routines for two sessions a week and do only two hard sets to start. If you feel your traps are really lagging and you want to emphasize them, prioritize them by doing a trap exercise first in your workout. Sometimes you don't feel focused and alert in the gym and your workout can suffer as a result. New Alpha Brain pre-workout was designed specifically for athletes and gym goers and supports focus, power, and endurance. It's the ultimate way to charge up your mind and body. Use the coupon code GETONIT to get 10% off Alpha Brain pre-workout at onit.com. Now back to the video. The traps can get tight from a lot of heavy training in combination with sitting in front of a computer or looking down at your phone all day. So it's helpful to stretch them out a little bit throughout the day and after training. This may help to prevent headaches as well as injury in the gym. Here's a simple stretch you can add to your routine. Step one, reach your right hand behind your back and place the back of your hand against the back of your left hip. Hold your shoulders down and back. Step two, grasp the back of your head and gently pull it down and across in the direction of your left shoulder. You'll feel a strong stretch in the back of your neck and traps. Hold for 30 seconds and then repeat on the opposite side. Repeat for three rounds. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And for an article that explains the ups and downs of trap training, click on the link in the description.